Are you suffering from severe stress? Are you anxious about life? That guy at work annoying you and telling you off, aye? Well, you should play a game that you will play for two hours. Wake up and realise work isn't stressful. Getting chased by a big massive horde of zombies, that's stress. If you wouldn't mind, it would mean the world if you gave this video a like. Liking helps YouTube share my videos to new people. And if you are returning, subscribe for more gaming reviews in the future. Let's do this. Days Gone is a great game that I believe unfairly got a lot of stick from critics. It came out only a few months after Red Dead Redemption 2, and I think a lot of people compared the two games. Days Gone was made by a smaller team, and whilst it's not the best game ever made, it's not trying to be. What it is, is a solid game made by a very talented group of game developers. Technically, this game today looks incredible. The detail in the faces of the characters on the PS4 and PS5 is phenomenal. You play as Deacon St. John, aka Darth Maul from Star Wars, and two years prior, the world was ravaged by a mysterious virus that turned the majority of people into zombies, but they are referred to them as freakers. This game takes place way up in the mountains, away from the cities where people are hidden away, surviving in old holiday camps and watchtowers anywhere they can. Darth Maul is mourning the death of his wife Sarah, who he last saw two years prior, since the day of the outbreak. He now survives in the wilderness with his friend Craven the Hunter and must fight the Freakers to survive. The game starts off a bit slow, but once it gets going, the storyline opens up and it gets really, really good. But I won't say how, because no spoilers here, you see? Ha <laughs> ha subscribe. Want to shoot things with big guns? Well, you have come to the right place, visitor, because it's a zombie game, and that means you're gonna shoot things. It's quite scary though. Like, the game isn't, like, Elden Ring difficulty, but it's ten times more stressful than Elden Ring when you're being chased by hundreds of freakers at the same time. Your heart rate will be pounding, the music kicks in, and you begin to realise you've got three bullets, one crossbow bolt, and half a broken baseball bat, and you're about to get decimated. You fly around the map on a motorbike that you can customise and upgrade, change the colour of it, everything. You can even give it a God of War paint. I, I had that the whole time. The further through the game you get, the stronger the freakers become, and the map opens up. So the further through the game you get, the more things you start to see and you discover new things. The map overall isn't that massive really, but the way it opens up for you to see new places, it makes it seem bigger than what it is, and I like that approach very nice. The soundtrack to this game is a standout for me. It is superb! The main theme is very emotional and epic, but when the freakers attack, it's gritty sounding, and that's when your stress levels go up and it's time to cry. It's not just the freakers though. Possibly the most dangerous thing in this world is the people that are alive out there. The people that have survived this apocalypse are the ruthless, tough, dirty, evil ones that are only out to survive. So you will be attacked by people randomly. You'll ride into a trap, or they can be a random sniper that will shoot at you. The game always throws something at you out of nowhere and it really emphasises that you are trying to survive and it's a dangerous world that you are in. Especially when you meet this lot that worship the Freakers like a religion. They are proper scary, but not as scary as my Molotov cocktails burn! <laughs> in this world, the only places with human life that are somewhat safe are the two camps Darth Maul is welcoming at the beginning of the game. You've got Copeland, who loves running his own radio station, which lasts like one minute and then he goes away to tell everyone he's good at hunting. Then you've got Tucker, who is this lovely, kind, nah, I'm just kidding, the granny enslaves all the refugees in our camp, this slag. In the end, Days Gone is a fantastic game, with a great story, solid acting, beautiful graphics, it's one of the PS4 games that gets bumped up to 60 frames per second on the PS5. It looks amazing. 
And for all these reasons, Days Gone is not getting a score out of 10. No, no, no. Days Gone is getting a special award from me. Days Gone wins the Ross Hendry's Most Underrated Game of All Time Award. Yes! There we go, a wee sound effect there, that's nice. It was unfairly compared with other games and it never got the recognition it truly deserved. I loved it. Loads of people loved it. And whilst it's not getting a sequel, that makes it more special to me. The hidden gem of the PlayStation exclusives. And there you go. So thank you for watching and be sure to like and subscribe for more reviews in the future. And a happy new year to you as well, 2024. I've got, I've got a good feeling about this year, you know, I feel, you know, last year I uploaded 14 videos and I got pretty much the same amount of views as I did the year prior and I uploaded 28 videos that year. But I got way more watch time, I got hundreds of hours more. So that means you are enjoying my videos more. So I came up with a theory, oh, if I make a video every week from now, I'll have about 50 videos and then I'll get way more views. And I'll become famous and buy a house and go and, and, and annoy all the people I used to hate at school and all that. Just wind them up and all these things. It'll be fantastic. But there you go. So if you can help me do that, that would be fantastic. But there you go. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next video. Which is, I think it's going to be about the Exodus game. Like the Mass Effect people, the new game that was released at the game. Aye, that one. Good. Right, bye.